video, I'm going to talk about the band Helmet and their album, Meantime. It was released on June 23rd, 1992, and uh, celebrating its 30th anniversary. It's a band I haven't spoken about on this channel yet, but I really like this band. I was a big fan of this album back when it came out. It was an album, it was kind of like a bridge between that alternative music and like metal music. Kind of like a little bit of that like hardcore punk as well. It's a very influential album. It doesn't get talked about often and uh, I'm going to talk about that in this video. So Helmet has a style of music that's kind of hard to describe. They were part of like this early genre of alternative metal. It kind of came out right after grunge exploded and the band does like a lot of these like stop start guitar riffs. They were one of the first bands to commonly use that like drop D tuning where they tune down like the, the low six or the E string where you can kind of play chords with one finger and you know a lot of bands were doing that uh, you know as for, for like uh, Deftones and Korn, Pantera they were doing that same thing but you know Helmet was one of the first bands to do that. They were one of those bands that were played on both MTV's Headbangers Ball and 120 Minutes kind of right in the middle of alternative and metal. You know, like I said, they influenced a lot of like new metal bands and uh, they're actually like one of the first, but I kind of like look at this band similar to like Faith No More. They kind of like don't really fit into a category. So let's talk about the album uh, Meantime now. So Meantime is their second album. It was their biggest album. It was kind of a hit. It reached number 68 on the Billboard 200. And like I said, it was very influential. It's an album that I listen to all the time. I used to love playing the song Unsung on the guitar. One of the songs like me and my brother used to jam to in our basement. The album was like the first uh, major label album for them, released on Interscope Records. And their debut album was called Strap It On. A lot of record companies like wanted to sign them after that album, but I think uh, a lot of record companies like thought they were going to be like the next Nirvana. They never really got that popular, but they did ha uh, have a strong underground following. The album cover is pretty cool. It's a man in like a protective suit shoveling something. It's based on a photograph by an artist. And there are two album covers with different colors. Like one is like more of a blue, one is more of a red. And they kind of like alternate like the colors with like the photo and the logo. And I will like put two images here so you can like see what I mean by that. The most popular song in the album is called Unsung, and it was the lead single for their album, and it was kind of successful. It reached 29 on the U.S. Alternative Songs chart, and it was a song that has that classic drop D tuning. The music video was very popular. It was one of those videos that was like roasted by Beavis and Butthead, and the song uh, has been used in like video games like Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas, and... The rest of the album is very good, so we're going to talk about it. The album has 10 songs. It's 36 minutes long. Fairly short album with all the songs written by Paige Hamilton. He was actually like the one person in the band who was like always on, in the band. Um, they, they did change members often. So the album starts with In the Meantime. The first song has uh, you know pretty cool riffs, uh, followed by their signature like Stop Start Riffing. Paige uses like these harsh vocals on the song and... You will see he has like two vocal styles, like these like harsh vocals and clean vocals. Like the clean vocals on a song like uh, Unsung and uh, many others, really good opening track. Use like a lot of those like noisy chords as well in this song. Then there's Iron Head, um, has the stop start riffing, the harsh vocals. Now the lyrics on these songs and this song are kind of simple but not really easy to interpret. And this one he mentions like killing and pain so that's the main theme of the song he really lets out some really killer screens and some screams and some uh really great drumming in here as well then there's give it this one has a cool like bass guitar and actually the first song where you do hear his clean vocals the lyrics are uh, very simple they mention like pain and killing and it's a cool song kind of more of like an alternative rock song as opposed to the aggressive metal song and the guitar solo is just very like raw and uh, enjoyable. Turned out, this one comes on the album right after Unsung and it's very heavy and aggressive. Uses those uh, harsh vocals and staccato riffs. It, they're uh, more of like a no noise rock guitar chords in the uh, iso in the chorus. Sorry, and this is a fast to face song, and the band stands out in the song with a few like isolated sections. And I also like the guitar solo has a very like raw garage rock sound. Then there's He Feels Bad, really cool song. 
And uh, if they slow down the tempo here, kind of use the clean vocals. The guitar solo really is Shredder and some faster playing music, but still has that garage rock tone. And Better, another one of my favorites, it has those like palm muted riffs in the intro. Really great sound. The vocals are harsh and they incorporate some like noise rock guitar chords. And one of my favorites from the second side of the album is actually one of the few songs where Paige uses both those clean and heavy vocals in the same song. Then there's You Borrowed. It's a cool melodic song with clean vocals. Probably one of the catchier and more melodic songs. Has a sound similar to Unsung. Lyrics are not that easy to decipher, but most of the songs are kind of like that. And the guitar solo is pretty cool and noisy. Then there is FBLA2, another cool song. I don't really know what the title means, but it has all the elements you would expect from a Helmet song. They mix in some cool palm muted chugging riffs and their signature like raw and noisy guitar solo. Then there's Role Model, the last song, it's like a slower paced song. It has a cool isolated bass riff during the first um, verse. Page has an almost spoken vocal style and this one has a very raw sound. The guitar solo is very unique. It has a psychedelic rock sound and it's kind of like separated into parts between the verses. So it's like a small solo, then like singing, then a small solo. Really good album closure. So in conclusion, this is a really good alternative rock album. It's not very technical. It's not very complex. It's just like raw, like punk rock has like this like garage rock attitude. The band is from New York City and they have that like classic like CBGB's type of vibe. And it's just, um, it's just very raw. And I really enjoy this uh, band. I really enjoy the music. The raw albums are good. You know, the early ones are good. You know, the, the first one, this one, Betty, those are good albums. The latest album from 2016 was, I think it was decent. Not really as great as the early ones, but that's all. Weekend is here. New album reviews. I'm going to do Porcupine Tree and Ailstorm. And I will be doing Coheed and Cambria, but that will be on the Chill Dude on the Couch Reviews channel. And it will be a collaboration. So I will link that to my community tab when that gets released. Please remember, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.